Beekeeper was directed by David Ayer and it stars Jason Statham as a man named Adam Clay. He takes care of bees and then one day when someone decides to mess up with his life he decides to go on a path of revenge and eventually he tries to target people who have targeted the ones that he cares about. There's a phrase that gets kicks around pretty often on the internet which is they don't make movies like they used to anymore. It's something where people watch new stuff and they go they would have made it like this in the 90s. They would have used this camera or this color scheme or where did the personality go? Where did some of that vibe go? That's actually where the beekeeper comes in because this is a movie that feels like it would have been one of the biggest box office successes of 1996. If you release this movie next to stuff like Demolition Man or stuff like Broken Arrow or Air Force One, this movie makes a killing. And even now I'm hoping it does pretty well because this very much is a throwback movie in a lot of ways. David Ayer, who has a track record people have gone all over the place with when it comes to the highest of highs with stuff like Training Day or with Fury and then you eventually get stuff like Suicide Squad, which not a lot of people enjoyed. I would say that this is one of his best movies in a long time. What he's done with this movie is essentially go back to basics. He didn't try to do anything overly complex. He didn't try to do anything overly, you know, demanding. It's a film that has a very simple premise and it commits to that premise very, very well. And it manages to be a movie where you just see Jason Statham beating up a bunch of guys and that's all you need. Which I've seen enough Jason Statham movies now over the last 20 years or so to know exactly what I'm paying for. I'm not exactly walking into a movie with him expecting anything more than a punch him up for about an hour, 40 minutes or two hours and just having a good time with that. The same thing happens with the Fast and Furious movies he's in as well. The same thing happens with movies like The Meg or Meg 2 or whatever it is that you want to throw. Or when you go back to the early days of the Transporter movies, like you know exactly what you're getting. I feel like The Beekeeper, in that sense, is a movie that you can't really get too critical over because it knows exactly what it is. Does it have its issues? Absolutely. I don't really care about some of these characters, especially not the villains. The crypto asshole played by Josh Hutcherson is Crypto Asshole 101. That's it. That's his entire character. He works with another guy who was below him who was Crypto Asshole number two. Crypto asshole number two is crypto asshole number two. I'm going to stop saying asshole now for the rest of this video. But that's essentially what I'm getting at over here. What you get with these characters is it. There are things that get very insane and over the top, especially this one big thing in the third act, which is like, okay, I guess we're doing this now. But at the same time, what did you pay to watch? You paid to watch a Jason Statham action movie. And I've already made clear what you're going to get with that. And in that way, the beekeeper succeeds in spades in doing exactly what it has to do. And it makes for a very fun watch. Like I said, it's not a perfect movie, but I went to see Brutal Action and you get it. It's very well filmed. Air does a really, really good job of bringing some of those scenes to life. Very colorful and vibrant at times, and some of the action is just genuinely pretty insane. There are things that Statham is doing in this movie that are very brutal, and the people who are, you know, being brutalized, my sincerest condolences. <laughs> I, he has a massive body count in this movie. At this point of time, I feel like there is an entire book you can make of just the number of people he's killed in movies. Like there is a, that's a big kill count is all I'm saying about that. Emmy Raver Lampman who plays a cop who is also trying to figure out what the rampage he's on is all about. She is really, really good over here too. Everybody honestly is having a great time. It's just some of the characterization, I, I mean, you don't really get much. But then again, going back to the statement before, what did you pay to watch? And this is not a condescending thing. I'm not trying to sound like, you know, a jerk by saying that like, hey, this movie's trying to not be super intelligent. I'm trying to simply state that sometimes simplicity is best. I think if you try to do something which is breaking what you're supposed to be all about, that can make things suffer immensely. I think with a movie like The Beekeeper, understanding what you are and committing to that 
makes it work as well as it does. And so I recommend just seeing the movie for a good time this weekend. Just have some fun watching Jason Statham really beat up some guys, make some B puns throughout the entire movie, or other characters make B puns. They're very over-the-top uses of the F word or something like that. Just have a nice time. That's all you need. And after you're done, go watch it again if you want to. That's it. Try not to think about it too much. I'm gonna give the beekeeper a 7.5 out of 10. A fun start to 2024, I'm not gonna lie. I actually had a very good time watching this movie. Like, you just have to have fun. Nothing wrong with a little bit of that, especially not in this world. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more videos very, very soon. I'm also going to be watching the new Mean Girls movie, which is going to be tomorrow. Looking forward to talking about that. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. And I will see you guys in the movies.